Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today I want to do a quick video on how I index a fretboard before gluing it on and how I keep it from shimmy shimmy shaking all over the place when, uh, when I apply the glue and the clamps. I guess it's not really shimmy shimmy shaking as much as it's squishy squishy squishing. I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so today I am going to put the fretboard on uh, my friend Joe's neck. Actually, his neck will go this way because he's a lefty. And um, we're going to be attaching this pre-slotted, and that is to say I already slotted it, a uh, piece of ebony. And we're going to plop it onto here, and it's going to be super cool. And it's also going to be super easy. And I've made a video about this before, so if you've already seen it, you won't go, ah. But if you haven't, you might just go, Ah, that's how they do it. So, um, enough with the bullshit talk, let's get started. All right, the first thing that we need to do is lay out where it is to go. And my fretboard is already, um, it's already square and the fret slots are perpendicular to the, um, to the edge. So what I like to do is clamp it, clamp it, Jed to the neck and then I'm going to scooch it around and make sure everything looks good. Now, there's not very much overhang down here at the uh, at the heel end and that's by design because I can kind of eyeball that and go, yeah, that looks good. But on the top uh, by the uh, by the headstock, I'll actually get my calipers and measure and make sure we are in the center of the fretboard. All right, and I always know where my nut is going to go because I have some lines drawn there. So we just kind of want to make sure that uh, the board is centered. And we're at 3 8 there and more than 3 8 there. So we're just going to wiggle this around until we get it exactly right. And that'll be cool. That looks good. We're going to measure it one last time before uh, before we call it done, because you know how this goes. Measure twice, cut once, that kind of thing. All right, all right. That looks good. Shit, I moved it already. Okay, I have unfornicated my clamps. Everything is back to where it needs to be. The board is nice and centered on the um, on the neck, and I put a one sixteenth inch drill bit in my drill press and. Um, this is where it gets good. So what I am going to do is I am going to put a 16th inch hole through one of the fret slots and into the neck. And then I'm going to come down to yonder end here and do it again. And it's going to look a little like that. And on the neck, it looks a little like that. So now I'm going to chase these guys down a little bit. You'll notice that I didn't drill into my truss rod slot. So after I have in deepened those holes, I am going to get some of this super handy 16th inch um, side dot material that I get from my buddies at Stumac. And you already know where this is going, right? I'm going to push this into the holes that I drilled in my neck. And that's fairly obscene looking. And let's see, we'll clip just a little bit off so that there's a piece poking out. Don't worry, I'll show you here. I'm going to get the other, the other one into the... All right. Now I have to put all this stuff back because if I don't, I'll lose it and Chris will yell at me again. All right, so dig that. Now I've got two little pokey Audi indexing pins made out of plastic. And I can go ahead and rest my fretboard onto those plastic parts and it will rest perfectly. But sometimes it's kind of a pain in the ass. So what I like to do is drill this hole out on the fretboard side to the next size up which as we all know is 5 ths right? That means that this hole all the way around 
is going to be just a little bit bigger than the 16th inch hole. How much bigger? A 64th. All right, so as you can see, now I've got my index pins and I've got holes in my fretboard and I can just go ahead and line this guy up and it's, it stays where I want it to stay. Obviously it will come off this direction, but happy meal for me. Okay, let's glue it down. All right, so everything is ready to glue. I've got my glue here. I've got my uh, cleanup brushes. I've got my truss rod. We're gonna go ahead and plop that in. And um, I like to cover my truss rod with a piece of this half inch tape. And there we go. Now all we need is a little bit of glue. And you'd be surprised how many people don't realize that you're supposed to make this sound when you're gluing stuff, but you do. You have to. My glue brush here, handy and dandy. A big chunk of shit in there, that's cool. I need a little more glue than I got here. Good thing I got a big bottle of it, huh? Come on, baby. All right. And I'm directly under the heat vent here. <laughs> so this should set up fairly quick. All right. Now, remember when I drilled those holes out a little, a little bigger? I'm just going to go ahead and mash glue up against the, um, the post there, so that'll take up some of the space. Now I'm going to reveal the truss rod, and then lay this dude on there, and it indexes just right. I've got a piece of scrap plywood. And now I'm fixing to clamp it. If I can get some clamps to cooperate. I don't want to go wrenching on this exactly just yet. When I, when I clamp it. Because um, remember, it's the 16th inch of plastic. So it's possible that that stuff can wiggle around if you go to, go to really herking on it. So let's get this guy getting close to being set up and clamped in a few spots, and then we can go herking on it. All right. Now, if you're really smart, you can um, do two necks at once, which is what I normally do, and you can just clamp them, squeeze them together, um, or you can just do one neck at a time. It's up to you, man. Live how you want to live, you know? You can also, of course, do this with a pre-radiused board. Um, so that's cool. All right. Now we're going to clean up some of this glue here. Because, of course, any glue that you can clean up while it is liquid is considerably easier than it is once it's dry, hard glue, right? Right, clean off where my nut slot's gonna go. And I will even clean some of this stuff off of this end because I don't need it to be there. Look at that, just like downtown, baby. Let's check, make sure everything looks good. Make sure we don't have any funky gaps or anything like that. Looks good on that side. And it looks good on that side too. Um, all right. Okay guys, so that is how we glue the fretboards to necks without having it shimmy shimmy shift all over the place. This neck was, uh, it's actually almost identical to Joe's neck, except this is for my buddy Jim. And you can see there is one of the holes that uh, was used to index it and the other hole was, was down here on Jim's. Um, 
But because it's plastic, you can saw right through that with, um, with a little fret slotting saw. And um, if any glue or anything mushes out, you can easily chase that. And again, because it's plastic, it, um, it's not gonna damage your equipment. And your fret wire uh, will overhang enough to cover up those um, holes that we drilled through the board. And no one will ever know that that is how you indexed it to the, um, to the neck. Jim's is looking pretty good here. I got a little more shaping to do and then it's ready to rock and roll. Uh, <laughs> I've got a bunch of uh, people who said, you know, if you sprinkle table salt on glue, it won't shift around. Okay, um, you know, I've heard that one before. I've never actually tried it. Maybe I'll do a video of me testing that one out. I have every reason to believe that it will work, but there's something about uh, uh, time moves very, very quickly when glue wants to set up. And having pins that you can just drop things right on to the, um, to the neck and not have to worry about it and measure while glue is setting up and clamp it and shit like that, no matter how much salt you use, um, it's never gonna take the place of pins for this job for me. And, and by the way, I don't think anyone was suggesting use salt to help glue fretboards down. I, I'm just saying that's something that's come up quite a bit. Um, but maybe we'll do a video on that. I think that's about it, you guys. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. If you have any questions about what I did in this video, please leave them in the comment section below. If you want to deep dive into this topic with me, you can send me an email and you can get in touch with me through my website, and that's texastoastguitars.com. If you like the video, give me the thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button now. Um, we've gotten a bunch of new subs lately, and I really, really appreciate it. You guys, help. thanks for helping us grow the channel a little bit that way. Um, if you appreciate content like this and you get stuff out of these videos, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to have helping us bring you guys cool stuff like this. But if you can't do Patreon, I totally get it. Um, please share this video as many places as you can think of and help us grow the channel that way too. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. I